This is the Niu KQI2, an electric scooter that goes up to 25 kilometers per hour. It has a 365 watt hour battery located right in here. It's got an excellent build quality. When you factor in the price of the scooter, that it's 499 euros, yet the build is impeccable. Now this particular model here has 10 inch airfoil tires that are 2.3 inches wide. It's all powered by a 300 watt motor that can peak at 600 watts with a maximum speed of 25 kilometers per hour. It also has an application that I'll run through in this in-depth review. I'll let you know what it's like to ride and all my pros and cons out of the K QI2. So what do we get inside the box with the scooter? Well, we do have a spare grip tape here. There's a tool for screwing in the handlebar, an instruction manual, and our charger. Now, the first thing I noticed about the scooter, as soon as I pulled it out of the box, is the finish and the build quality is impeccable. It's really good. Now, they do use a lot of plastics, so with our mud guards on the outside, but behind that, it does have a metal frame. Now, it has an IP54 splash and dust resistance. A nice wide deck with plenty of room to fit my feet on it and a kickstand that is sturdy and it hasn't fallen over yet, the scooter in my time now using it. So we're located within the deck here, you will find a 365 watt hour battery that is good for up to 40 kilometers range, but that's of course using the low powered mode. The KQI2 does have reflectors all over, which is really good for safety and the rear tail light here is nice and bright. When you do brake, it does get a little bit brighter and overall, it can be seen and is nice and visible, so adding to our safety when you ride about on the scooter. Handlebars do have side reflectors on them, and there's a reflector here at the front, and we have this halo design with the front headlight. Now, it has one of the best headlights I have ever seen in a e-scooter, and even an e-bike. It is really good. It's nice and bright, and it sets out quite a rectangular, more squarish kind of light beam, too, from its projector lens that it does have. And it's always on that halo light too, which I think actually looks really good. And it's great for safety again. This model is rear wheel drive, which I do prefer. I think it's the safest option. Front wheel drive scooters like the Xiaomi's I do find to be a little bit more dangerous. This model here has a 300 watt motor that peaks at 600 watts and it is running on a 48 volt system. Good tires on this model too. They are from CST. Now these are 10 inches, the diameter of them, and 2.3 inches wide. So a nice wide tire, and they do have a street tread pattern on them, which is directional to help push away the water. So right here we do have a front drum brake, and the rear brake, that one is an electric brake, which actually does work quite well. I'll give you a demo of that later on in my braking test. The latch mechanism here does feel safe and secure. There is no play in movement with the handlebars and the headset right here. So just to release it and fold down this handlebar, you simply need to pull up a little security on it, then pull that down and the whole handlebar will just drop down like so. The handlebar then latches into the mudguard right here and it's quite strong. It's not like the Xiaomi scooters where the mudguards are often the weakest point of them where they do break. I see a lot of people riding around with no rear mudguard. So that is where you can then lift it right up and it just weighs about 17 almost 18 kilos so the weight isn't too bad the charge port is located just down from the handlebars there is a really good nice rubber gasket that goes over it and it's a very strong charger plug too the charge time is about seven hours to fully charge it now my only real complaint with the scooter is this the lack of lock grip so these grips they tend to move around a little bit which to me is a little frustrating i mountain bike a lot i'm used to lock grips and i just don't want grips that move around now we've got a bell right here that's the lever of course for the front brake but also activates that rear electric brake and here is to accelerate now the screen it's nice and bright and you can actually read this display in direct sunlight so here it's flickering a little bit that's just on camera it's something to do with my shutter rate and my settings there and our power button so you connect it up with bluetooth to the application where you can see your mileage on it all sorts of information and i'll run over that now just quickly what you can expect out of the app this app is basic, it's straightforward, and it's very easy to use. So you can see my remaining battery percent. It does tell me that I should be able to get 12 kilometers more. And under riding record here, let's take a look. So my ride from today 
ended up being 19 kilometers. Not bad with 30% battery left. So that's why I say that I should be able to get at least another eight kilometers, maybe nine more and get around 28 or 25 kilometers. Depends on your weight and riding conditions there, of course. So riding stats, you can see a little bit more information on that too, max speed, average speed. And under this tab here, that is where we can get firmware updates. I've had two already, the energy recovery. So this is the regenerative braking. You can set that to different levels. Uh, I've just accidentally lost that Bluetooth connection to the scooter, which is sitting outside. So you do need to be paired up in order to see that. Change the unit of speed and custom mode is where you can set your own uh, speed limit with it. So maybe, maybe you've got a child that's going to be riding on this that's say a 12 year old or something. You don't want them going over 12 kilometers per hour. You can set that there. You can see the number of battery cycles. And if you go into go there, you do have a GPS tracking. So you can track your trips there and it'll give you a little bit more information too with that. So it's a straightforward app and I do like all the features it does have. And you can see battery cycles, which is great if you're going to be buying a used one. And what is it like to ride now? So there's plenty of room for my feet on the deck here. No problem with that. Now where we have the rear mud guard, it looks like it might get in the way, but it doesn't. The kickstand, it feels high quality. This whole scooter, as I mentioned before, is just screaming quality. And for the price tag, it's very good too, what they do offer with the finish of it. So you just need to kick off. Now, when you first start riding it, it will be in the smart eco mode, which is a lower speed mode. So 15 kilometers max only. So you just kick off and then apply, of course, the accelerator here. And then I can safely get up to now 25 kilometers per hour, which is the maximum speed. Now the acceleration is smooth. It's nothing groundbreaking. It's good for this type of legal scooter here in Europe. So the ride, very smooth, thanks to the 10 inch air filled tires. They're tubeless, they should be puncture resistant. Small patch of rough road just ahead, we'll see how it handles it, and a small climb that's about 15, 10 to 15 degrees. So it's going up this just fine. Slowing a little with the climb down to 18, 17 kilometers instead of 25. But that's all right. Now it does have that peak output of 600 watts, but most of the time it will be running at uh, 300. So I just wanted to mention too that with the display, you can tell the battery more or less because it's got five little bars there. So each one of those five little dots or squares represents 20% battery life. Now the scooter is perfect just for cruising along here on smooth surfaces. So this pathway isn't bad at all. I don't need full suspension for it, but if you get onto anything a little bit rocky, you are certainly going to feel it because it doesn't have any suspension. Now with the accelerator, there is no cruise control on it. So if you hold it down, it's not going to maintain the 25 kilometers per hour, which is the EU legal limit here. As soon as I take my finger off it, it then starts to slow down with the regen braking, which you can adjust. So the regenerative braking, you've got three different level settings. So the light, medium, and strong. Then the climbing performance. So what I'm climbing up now is about 10 degrees, the gradient here, this incline. So it's not too steep for it. And I'm able to get up this actually at about 25 kilometers per hour, which is very good. I'm gonna move over to a very steep climb, which is my Climb test spot, 25, 30%. We'll see how the KQI2 is going to handle it. And it's going all right. 20 kilometers per hour so far. And 19. So it's slowing a little down to 17, 16. I do have a bit of a headwind too as well. Here that motor is struggling. So 25, 30 degree climb here. Yes, just can do it now at nine, but not so good. Now this is what I expected because it's not a super powerful scooter. So for this, you are going to have to kick a little and it will really burn through that battery too with such steep climbs. Braking test now. So from this post here, full brakes. Not bad at all for a drum brake at the front and then a electric brake for the rear. So it's just using that motor. And of course I do have the regen on. So when I'm not pressing the accelerator and going downhill, it's gonna regenerate a little bit of energy and help to charge the battery a tiny little bit.
and a range of the KQI2. So I'm down to 50% battery now and I've covered 14 kilometers. So I'm looking at a possible 28 kilometer, maybe 30 if I use the lower power mode on this. So I've just been burning around full accelerator and using the highest power setting, so up to 25 kilometers per hour too. So if you weigh lighter than me, I'm 82 kilos, you should be able to get more range. And if it's mostly on the flat, then you'll be able to get even more. So I think realistically you're looking around 30 kilometers with this model, which is quite good. Now, what are the things I really like about the KQI2 here. Well, the build quality is excellent. It's absolutely top notch with this model. You cannot fault it. Everything has a really high quality, the materials on it, even though, yes, it's got plastic on the outside here, but it has a metal inner frame. There is no play with the front handlebars. The mechanism to fold it is really good. So you just pull up on here, pull that down, and then it clips into place, and you can lift it up and put it into the boot of a car, lift it upstairs, whatever. So it is around 18 kilos. It's not a bad weight for a e-scooter like this. And the lights on it, really good. Probably the best I've seen on an e-scooter yet. They are excellent. Plenty of reflectors, so they're thinking about safety there too. The brakes do work really well. And we can go up climbs that are around about 15 degrees maximum without losing too much speed. Anything that's over that, about 15 to 20 degree gradient climbs is when you start to slow down a little bit and you do notice that. But that's what you'd expect out of a scooter like this. It's only got a 300 watt motor that can peak at 600. So the charge time is about seven hours and that's pretty standard there as well for 365 watt hour battery. What are the things I don't like then about the KQI2? Well, very, very minimal. They don't have lock grips on them. So these grips here, they're spinning around and that kind of annoys me a little bit. I would swap them out and put some lock grips on. Not hard to do, very easy fix. The other is there is no cruise control. So when you're holding that down and you wanna just maintain the same speed like other models offer, don't actually have it with this one, or I can't find it in the application. Now the application is also very good. So it's really just two super minor cons there. For the 500 euro price this sells for, it is a fantastic e-scooter. So thank you so much, much for watching my review here of the KQ i2.